you say acidic, you're saying in relation to both of them. So the pH would be lower than both of the, their pKa's? Because that's right. there are different values for each one. But I guess we can wait and see. Sure. Well, so we said that, for example, this will be, these will be protonated at a low pH. Right. But of course, as you're pointing out, the term low is relative. Right. Low relative to what? Well, so you're making a good point. The pH is low when it's low relative to the group's pKa. That's right, that's the benchmark, basically. So when the pH is lower than this guy's pKa, that's when this guy's gonna be protonated. And when the pH is lower than this guy's pKa, that's when this guy's gonna be protonated. So we just, at first we were just talking qualitatively and saying things get protonated at a low pH and deprotonated at a high pH, and now we have the benchmark that divides the low pHs from the high pHs. The benchmark is the pKa for that functional group. And when you take your exam, as you might have already seen in the exam book, he's going to give you a table of all the pKa's mm -hmm. for all the different amine and carboxy groups so you can tell what the benchmarks are. Yeah. We'll probably get to some problems like that as we go on today. This is glutamic acid. Of course, you don't need to have that name memorized again, but this is glutamic acid. By the way, where's the alpha carbon? Or at least, what, where's the key alpha carbon that we focus on? Is this the alpha carbon that we normally focus on here? No, this is the alpha carbon. This is why it's so important. I guess, in a sense, this is kind of an alpha carbon for this carboxy group, but this is the alpha carbon for the main chain, so to speak, of the amino acid. This is why it's so crucial to label the main alpha carbon because it's easy to lose it in the whole string of carbons that, that you're going to have with the side chain. Of course, the way I'm drawing the pictures, it's very easy to find the alpha carbon, but your instructor is very likely to draw amino acids in weird configurations where he might say, put the side chain on the right and the main chain pointing up into the left, and then it's hard to pick out the different pieces unless you label the alpha carbon here. So this over here is our side chain, and this is the main structure. Again, this is a glutamic acid. Now, let's say that we were at a very high pH. Let's say we're at a very high pH. What would be the form here, and what would be the charge on this molecule? What would be the charge on this molecule at a very high pH? Maybe to review, what was the charge on this molecule at a high pH? So the high pH meaning it's basic. Right. So everything's decomposing. So negative one? Yeah, negative one. And what was the charge on this molecule at a low pH? Plus one. Now, what's the charge on this molecule going to be at a very high pH? Because our carboxy group will be deprotonated. But wait, there's well, two carboxy groups. That's, uh, there's the rub. That's right. And this will be deprotonated, too. So the new lesson here is previously we only talked about the nitrogen at the end terminus and the carboxy at the carboxy terminus. But there can also be carboxy groups and nitrogens on the side chain. This is one of the big stumbling blocks to students to remember there can also be important functional groups on the side chain. We weren't talking about that before. So you have to watch out not just for the carboxy terminus and the end terminus, you also have to watch out for carboxy and amino groups on the side chain as well. Or in general, as you might have already seen in class, some ch side chains are either acidic or basic. Side chains can be acidic or basic, and then they respond to the pH as well. It doesn't have to be a carboxy group or an amine. There's other types of acidic and basic things as well. Question, if it were at a low pH, mm -hmm. um, it would be NH3+. Plus. But would the, would the carbon or oxygen ever get protonated? Yeah, so let's go through that. Suppose that we were at a very low pH, then this would be protonated. And how about the carboxy, how about this oxygen? Would this be protonated? Yes. And this one would be protonated too. Does that answer your question? Or no, I was wondering if like, the lone one? pairs on those oxygens actually get protonated. That's right. In the examples we're going to be looking at, that's never going to happen. We're never going to be... We've actually seen examples in the past where carbonyl oxygens got protonated. That's not going to be happening here, since after all, there's already a positive charge here. So it's not as easy to protonate this as it would have been without this positive charge. All we, so as, as far as amino acids are concerned, there really are only two forms for the carboxy group. This is one form and this is the other. You don't need to worry about any other forms for a carboxy group. 
for amino acids. So fully deprotonated version is always NH2. It can't go negative. It's always That's a good point it's as well. Like That's right. Zero in that regard. That's right. So again, there's only two possible forms for amine groups as well. These are the only two possible forms. Theoretically, if you got really, really, really uh, basic, eventually you would strip off another proton here. But uh, unless he was really giving you a stretch problem, he, he, that's not, he's not going to give you that on the test. Uh, for any normal problem, there's only two possible forms for the amine nitrogen and only two possible forms for the carboxy site. So low pH would be plus one. This would be plus one, yes. So here, the charge would be plus one. And here, the charge would be minus two. Minus two. So the, the moral here is we have to watch out not just for the acidic, the acidic and basic N-terminus and C-terminus, but also acid and basic groups on the side chain. When he says circle the C-terminus, we circle the whole carboxy end? Or like, what exactly does it matter what we circle? Just like something on the right? Well, let's see. If he said circle the C-terminus, yeah, I guess he would just mean this. OK. Yeah. You can take a look at what he does in the answer key, but that's, that's what I think he means. Here's a common type of problem that you'll probably see where he's going to just ask you to draw the structure of an amino acid at a certain pH. So you'll need your exam book so you can look this up. Let's draw a tyrosine at a pH of 1. It's always going to be attached to the CH2 group. Okay. So it's always going to be attached to the CH2 group or the leftmost carbon in this table. If you think about it, that has to be because otherwise this carbon wouldn't have a full octet. It's only got three things it's attached to That's showing, true. so there has to be an so alpha carbon if, attached I mean, if we as well. Go through all of this, right. you can see any of these molecules. It would be right. attached here, CH2 right. here. Three, four. Here it's already four of them. Okay. Why don't we go through a bunch of those? That's a good idea. So at least we're sure that we're going to see this. Well, then let's say that this will be the low pH side of the board, and this will be the high pH side. So at this low pH side, is this the correct form of the N-terminus? Is this right? No, it should be protonated? Right. Actually, I thought it was right, but you're right. No, no. How about this? Is this the right form? Yeah, this is the right form, because this is the fully protonated form. Mm -hmm. By the way, notice when an amine is fully protonated, it doesn't have a charge. When the amine gains the pro when, when the amine is in its fully protonated yes. form, does it have a charge? Yes. When the carboxy is fully protonated, does it have a charge? Yep. No. So fully protonated can mean a different thing for charges, depending on which functional group you're looking at. You should always draw it out. How about here at the low pH end? Uh, is this the right form for this amine? Yep. Yes. And is this the right form? No. Yes. Now this should be deprotonated. Notice that carboxy groups have charges when they're deprotonated, but amines don't. It's going to be very important to always keep track of the charges. Well, going down the table. But that's not to say that at a low pH it will always be plus one because of side chains. That's right. right. Okay. All we're saying is that the amine group groups. will have the okay. plus charge, but yeah. that could be balanced by something else. Okay. Thanks. All right. Now, how would I draw glycine? Glycine or tyrosine? Let's start with glycine. Uh, you guys actually had a good idea. Let, let's put this aside for a second. Let's just go through a lot of these amino acids. So, how would we draw glycine here? And where would you put the hydrogen? On the alpha carbon. In fact, you might not even draw that, though, because that's a hidden hydrogen. 
So you might just dry glazing like this. Very well. And, and that would have the same form over here as well. 